Breath of the Wild's Hyrule was massive, and the open-air gameplay is a huge deviation in form to the Zelda series. So, whenever this series that I grew up with, that I've played countless hours in, you know, decided to make such a huge leap into open-world, open-air games, I would just sit in my high school and watch the Breath of the Wild trailer on repeat and cry because I was so excited. And I had a little countdown in my notebook. Uh, if I can find the picture of it, I'll put it on screen. And, and so, you know, six years later now, Tears of the Kingdom coming out, we're going back to Breath of the Wild's Hyrule, and I'm, I'm a totally different person. I'm six years older, my mom's dead, and I'm still, I'm, I'm rife with excitement. Uh, my 16-year-old self is like, hey man, me too, right? I'm gonna go ahead and get the small cons that I do have out of the way, right? First and foremost, the frame rate can dip. It can go down, you know, maybe 15 or 20 frames a second. But I mentioned this on Twitter, the Switch is just a glorified Game Boy, and having a game the size and scale of Tears of the Kingdom run on it at all is a huge win in the first place, right? Like, is the frame rate stutter annoying? Yeah, but, and, and does it make me, like, really mad? No. Other than the repetitiveness of the story, the dungeons also kind of get repetitive. I love and appreciate that Nintendo heard what people didn't like about the Divine Beasts. Much like the similarity, the simplicity. And, the, and then rectified it pretty well, I think. I mean, it's still the repetitive get in there, do four to five objectives, fight the boss. Uh, each dungeon, at least, does a good job encapsulating the feeling of what that area should be right like a huge fire temple in the depths like surrounded in lava that that's so fucking cool right like that's neat a, a big old pyramid in the desert that's that's just that's just iconic you put pyramids in deserts <laughs> so that's apparently what people do on earth uh, the dungeon design themselves is extremely good and fun like i think that the the mechanics that they try to implement the the light the mine carts the slow-mo jumping that that's all those are all new fun mechanics so let's get into some uh pros uh which the first one i have written down here is link is baby girl and ganon is voiced by matt mercer which makes me and the rest of the internet insanely horny all right well <laughs> other than that other than that, the good is everything, honestly. I think IGN said it best when they said, Breath of the Wild felt far from unfinished, but inconceivably, Tears of the Kingdom has somehow made it feel like a first draft. Ultra Hand Fuse and Ascend absolutely make this Hyrule your playground, more than Boomy Zoomies or BLSS ever could. It has been a week at the time of writing this, and people have already found ways to launch yourself into the sky by recalling a spear that's attached to a plank of wood. Link's movement, abilities, weapons, and everything just feel more crisp and refined in, in Tears of the Kingdom. There are dozens of new enemies, probably well over a hundred overworld bosses, not to mention all the bosses in the depths. And if you're like me, you might be excited that Floor Masters are back. Uh, they're terrifying, but they're back. Interesting characters, entertaining enough dungeons, so many side quests, boss fights, caves, shrines, every direction you look. I went to the Great Fairy and she said, oh, I want to hear a violin. So I went to the violin girl and she said, oh, I need to read the newspaper. And so I went and found a newspaper, but somehow I ended up in the depths for 30 minutes in between there because I got distracted. And that's just how this fucking game works. It's the most genuine, real rendition of the term open world that we've had since Breath of the Wild came out. And just like Breath of the Wild, you can go directly to the final boss after the tutorial area. I feel like I could talk about Tears of the Kingdom and how good it is for hours, but I won't do that here. I love writing, but I feel like the five or six minute long video that this ends up being is enough. I'll leave the video essays to the people who are good at making them, and I can't wait for- Hi, this is Boss Keys. I'm Mark Brown. He has to make one. He's legally bound to do that. 
Tears of the Kingdom is bigger, better, and more ambitious than Breath of the Wild, somehow making it feel like the definitive way to explore the Hero of the Wilds version of Hyrule. A wishful Koi Jesus likes to imagine that because of the recent statements of the Zelda series director Aonuma, that it may be possible for us to be seeing a third installment in the, in the wilds of Hyrule. But even if we get a new rendition of Hyrule six years from now, I know that with what the Zelda team has learned from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom combined, it's only going to get better from here. I am a bit of a Zelda fanboy through and through. But I feel, even without the bias of me loving Zelda, you need to understand that Tears of the Kingdom, like its prequel, is a solid 10 out of 10 every day of the week. Game of the year, number one best game on Switch, the one game you need to pick up and play immediately. You'll spend at least 30 hours, or maybe even into the hundreds of hours with this one. It's worth full price, a complete and working game at launch in 2023. You need to play it now. Thank <laughs> you.